Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> sorry about the previous uh, little mishap there. I started the video and then realized that I had done something with my microphone and I had no sound. So that's the joy of live streaming. So <laughs> I jumped off because I don't think anybody was watching at that point anyway. And we're starting this over again. I'm doing a quick live video of the Control art book by Future Press because I'm really excited about opening up this book. If you have not played the game Control, I actually, you might like, like wait for a time when you can really, uh, you know, like spend some time with it. <laughs> it's a, it's a Metroidvania 3D kind of, uh, like at the end of this game, you're like a superhero and there's a really awesome progression, but the lore in the game is just this amazing combination of like the X-Files, uh, the SBC, if you're, um, secure protect control, if you're familiar with that, um, the, it's just a, like Jungian psychology and then kind of horror elements. And I don't know, it, this game like just blew my mind, uh, quite honestly. Like it's uh, just blew my mind. <laughs> hey, Josh, how's it going, man? Thank you. I, I realized halfway like into the beginning that I, I couldn't hear myself. So that was good. Um, so anyway, I got this art book. I bought it back in August and I've been waiting for it since then, since it was announced. I love video game art books because as an author, I use art books a lot in world building and in looking at how the art was done, how it was developed, how ideas were developed. You know, like the Bioshock art books are pretty amazing as far as like walking you through how Bioshock was developed, the kind of gameplay loop that they came up with, with the big daddies and little sisters and the way the story developed. And then you can also see how the developers like start with an idea and they're kind of throwing ideas against the wall to see what sticks. And then they end up with what we have is Bioshock and also Bioshock Infinite, which, you know, we could talk about Bioshock Infinite, but the art book was really cool. Um, same thing with like Mass Effect, the Mass Effect games. Um, Wolfenstein is one that has another amazing set of art books that go along with that, that show you the breadth of world building that, that uh, machine games did for Wolfenstein. And it's just mind boggling. And sometimes as sort of an exercise, I'll go through and um, just look at the, look at the art in the book and then try and imagine how I would describe those things. If I was writing that out in a story, Titanfall is another one that has some really good art books. Um, I haven't actually even played Titanfall yet. Cause that wasn't mainly a PC game. Um, I need to, cause I've heard that it's solo campaign is actually pretty good, but I love mech warfare. So that was one thing where being able to look at the art for, for Titanfall and it's mech warfare and how the mechs were designed and the color schemes and all that kind of stuff. Like, you don't have a lot of room to put those things in a story, but it's cool to see how a video game pulls all that together so that you immediately see and get a feel for like different factions and, and things like that in the, in the video game. Like as you start playing and get, you know, acclimated to the world that the game is trying to show you. So control does this by you basically walk into the oldest house and you're a person who has like felt kind of odd your whole life. And you have finally discovered a thing that you've been looking for your whole life your little brother was kidnapped or disappeared when you were when you were little and you both experienced this weird event where you discovered a slide machine in a junkyard that opened doorways to other worlds and so you and the kids in your town have an experience with this slide machine and then this mysterious government agency called the Federal uh, Bureau of Control appears and they take con they take control that's what they do of the slide machine and everything that goes along with it but you destroy all the slides except for one. And then, then you end up running away and your brother is taken by the agency. And so, but it combines a lot of really cool stuff from the real world. Like there's, if you look up the AT&T building in, it's in Manhattan, I believe, which is this like windowless skyscraper in the middle of New York that used to be the central hub point for most of the telecommunications in the U.S. And it's like this crazy brutalist, you know, monolith that just, is standing in the middle of Manhattan and they did, they, they just drew on all these things. So I'm really excited to check this out. I kind of wanted to document this moment so that I can come back and look at it because, you know, once you open something up, you don't get to go back. Right. So this is the back of the book. Um, it's not quite as tall as I was expecting, but I think it's going to sit on the bookshelf really well. Like it's not going to be too tall. It's, it's a little bit like, I want to say it's a good foot long. Um, so that's cool. Like it's going to be, a little wide, or I mean, a, like long for the bookshelf, but, but you can see it's got a nice, um, in fact, am I holding it upside down? I might be because the, uh, the triangle, which represents the board in, um, 
in control is uh, that's just that symbol there. So, all right, without further ado, um, let me zoom on that just so you can see what that looks like. So it's a nice slip case um, and, and all that good stuff. And I'll zoom back out and I'm going to go ahead and uh, open her up. Okay, so I'll probably slide this inside. Um, I forgot to say Future Press is the the publishing house that did this, and I, they've done a couple other art books. Most of the art books that I've got have, were done by Dark Horse Comics. Um, so this is the first time I've seen a book from Future Press, so I'm also excited about that. So what do we got? I'm going to put the slipcase over here. And... Okay, so basically just a nice black front of the book. The uh, the edges are painted red, which is really cool. This kind of gets to the horror el one of the horror elements in the story, and the hiss are your main antagonist, and they're kind of this infestation from another dimension. And the way the game keys you in to whenever the hiss are going to attack is the fact that you see red. And so it almost gets to the point where it sort of infiltrates your brain, and if you see red any other time in your life, while you're playing the game, you're going to be like, oh, the hiss, look out. <laughs> so, um, okay, let's, sorry, I keep reorient, reorienting my camera here. So, there we go. So that's not, uh, you can see they've, like, the pages are a nice thick, um, it's a shiny kind of magazine printing. Um, and so... Yeah. Okay. So, the other the other art book that I was going to mention that's a great one is Dishonored um, by Arcane Studios, and Arcane also did Prey that came out in was it 2019 or 2018, and one of the things I love about their art style is that it's a very it's painted it's almost like watching or playing an oil painting, but the amount of detail that they they get into their games is just amazing, but that was one of the aspects of Control. Like there are times it looks the game looks like an oil painting but other times it's it's very realistic. I don't have an RTX video card, so I couldn't quite get all of the amazing um, like mirror effects that the game will do, but the it was still enough for me to just be amazed. And so I, I look forward actually to playing it in the future with an even better video card. <laughs> um, but so here we're getting just a lot of background info, and you can kind of get a sense of like you're seeing things that are redacted. This is something in the game that they do a lot of where you find documents and then portions of them are redacted to make it like the, um, you know what, I'm going to flip this over because that might be, <laughs> that's better. Um, so we've got a bunch of info. Okay, we start out with world building there. And wow, we've got a bunch, so much text, like background, um, you can see some of the interiors in the building, the way it was designed. Oh, that's cool. So the Bureau of Control, that's a different logo than the game actually has eventually. So that's neat. Um, building shifts, how they designed that. This is really nice. This is really nice. The pages are nice and thick. Um, you can see how they develop some of the different symbology here. Like, I think that font, Maritime Transport. Now, that's cool. That's not actually in the game. So <laughs> maybe in the future there will be um, different things like that. Um, one of the things, so outdated technology, like one of the really cool aspects of this game is that it, it talks about, like, Jungian archetypes and the idea that if, if an object basically kind of gets too much... Um, kind of psychic energy around it it becomes an altered item or what they call an object of, of power and because of that certain things cannot be in the oldest house so new technology tends to get destroyed iconic technology of any kind and so they put a lot of work into the details of the game and certain things that you see are all like indicative of a time a time period in the united states and certain kinds of style you know styles and things like that 
And then, so yeah, the astral plane, like one of the things you do is you dive into what the, they call it the astral plane, duh. Um, but there's, it definitely has a graphic style. And the minute you enter it in the game, you have this kind of otherworldly sense of how things operate. And it has its own design cues that uh, cue you into, into how to play. But um, that was one of the things I really enjoyed about the game too. So this is really nice. Um, so they raised the, you know, I, I was fortunate to get it for $30. I believe it's at forty nine ninety nine now. Based on other art books that I've, you know, that I've got, I have, I would say this is, this is a hundred dollar book. Like I would expect to pay this. This is, there's so much detail in here. Um, of course I would kind of like it, like the art isn't quite, there's just a lot of text. Are we going to get to more art? Um, yeah. I would say the art isn't presented quite as, as large and front and center as I would like. This is just a ton of background information, it looks like. The mailroom is one of my favorite places in the game. And there's just so much, like, it's an arena, basically, but it's this awesome, iconic sort of, like, just the way it looks and then how you can play it among the pillars. And it's multi-leveled. There's three levels, actually, that you can um, you can fight the hiss in. Um same thing in this area in the Panopticon. Yeah, so lots of awesome detail. The art isn't quite as big as I would like, but this is still, this is cool. You can see how things were developed. I mean, one of the neat things about the Arcane art books is that they'll show you how different characters kind of iterated over time. And that was cool to see, especially if you want to kind of practice des describing different kinds of characters. I found that really useful, like different facial expressions or just what people look like, things like that. Um, so yeah, I look forward to reading this because there's just so much in here. Like the game already has a ton of lore in the game itself, but um, there's obviously a lot more to dig into. So the binding, if you were curious about that, uh, it is a it is a glued binding, but I mean, what did you expect with a, oops, let me get that up there closer. Whoop. Zoom in. Yeah. Um, but it's nice. I mean, this is as nice as any hardback that you would pick up. So that's cool. Let me fix the focus there. Yeah, so it looks like it basically is just walking you through the different areas of the game, why decisions were made about the game. Um, they said they get into the DLC, but I'm not seeing a lot of stuff from the foundation yet. No, so here's something that was not in the finished game. The Maritime. Maybe this became the anchor eventually. Um, that's all really cool. There's the ordinary AWE. Okay, so expansions. Um, I was not a fan of the, uh, the Alan Wake DLC, but I love the foundation. And I'm not... There's not as much art of the foundation. The foundation was gorgeous, I thought. Like, so they've got stuff about. So this was a secret quest where you find you find these these cats. <laughs> so it's cool they've got things about that in there. Archive material. Okay, so here's some iterative. Like here's some logo work that they did. That's cool. Same thing with uh, the FBC logo. So this is neat. If you, you know, if you were a fan of Control and you like art books, oh, they even got some stuff about the Threshold Kids and things about how it was, how it was made. That's cool. <laughs> this was just a creepy horror aspect of it. You find these, these different VHS um, players throughout the, throughout the game. And, uh, at first, I was, like, just really creeped out by it, and then it became, like, oh, this is cool. I like this. <laughs> um, yeah, wow. That is that is cool. <laughs> Sorry about not flipping it over to begin with. I should have done that. Um, oh, man, that guy's creepy. You know, I said SBC before. I meant SCP, <laughs> Secure Control Protect. That's the fun of doing these things live, right? 
here's the map. You know, a lot of people had a hard time with the map, but um, once you figure it out, I thought it was very intuitive. That's cool. Yeah, cool. Okay, well, if you're on the fence about this, I hope this kind of helps you make your decision. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing to take a look at is they give you a folder of, I don't, I don't know that these were different for each, um, each book, but, but maybe there's these prints, which are cool. I think of this one as like the Stranger Things poster, um, Mold One. So that's like a different version of the Mold One boss that you fight. And then here's the, the final fight in the Astral Plane. Which was not my favorite fight in the game, but was still pretty cool. So, yeah. I'm going to put this in there as well. So it stays safe. And this is going to have a, uh, a place of honor on my bookshelf. <laughs> that, this, is, this is just really cool. I'm so excited to have it. So... Okay, I look forward to reading through this, and hopefully if you were on the fence about this book, this helps you out. Um, let me know any questions, and I can do my best to, uh, to answer them. But um, there's also a link below in to Amazon if you're trying to find it. Um, there it is. So let's put it back in its slipcase to keep it safe. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, hey, there's that. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you later.